Hello again, this is Damien from Fixwin PC coming again with another helpful video. The last video we did was hacking CCTV, one way you can get hacked and means by which you can prevent the hack. This week we're coming with the detection phase of this process. So after someone has made an unauthorized attempt, you get an email notification by the email notification will then prompt you to log into your DVR and check into the logs and then you can see the IP address that attempted to log in to your DVR and by getting the IP address you can run a trace and see where the attempt originated from so I have a demo set up and we're going to first configure the email alerts I'll show you how to do that and then we're going to give it a test run and then we're going to take the results we find do a trace now there will be some existing results we can use and then we'll, we'll generate the one that we did and confirm it's coming from our location so let's dive right into it. the first thing we're going to want to do is log into our DVR using the admin password as it has the most privileges or if your username has the privilege to go into the logs and search you can use that too so we go admin put in the password keep that a secret and it should open up to the camera screen there you go so we're not viewing cameras today so I could just ignore this prompt and go right into the configuration screen and from configuration now there's information on this configuration page here that's uh, that's very vital so let's get to where we configure the emails so we go to network go to advanced settings and the first option that pops up is email so you can see I already have some configuration settings here now normally this would be blank you would have to first enable it right and you would have to, have to fill out the fields now let's go through each field now the first field is sender you can put any name here this name is so that you recognize uh, it's basically a username to identify it helps identify which DVR you're talking about. If you're somewhere that has multiple DVRs, you can have it DVR1, DVR2, DVR3, or um, you know, whichever, however you label it. So this is basically the label for the DVR. Now this is just for the, the email section. There's an actual label for the DVR itself that is found here in the system settings, which is the name. Now when you get in here, it by default it's named embedded net DVR or embedded DVR net, however it is, you change that device name to a name that you can recognize. Right? Because this is what will show up in the email. So you know exactly where it is. Because what I used to have problems with would was that I would get emails and then it will show up as embedded net DVR. And I was like, oh I need to go and rename these DVRs so I can know exactly whose DVR it is alright so we're going back to network advanced settings email so the first thing you're going to do is enter a name so I already have this name entered so you know you enter a name and then the sender's address now if this is your personal DVR then you'd want to put your email here and you can put any email but be sure it's an email that you have access to all right because you're going to need to put in a password so make sure it's an email that you own so you put in the email address here so you see i have my the, the company email and then 
for the email email service right this one is Gmail they're gonna want to put the SMT SMTP server the simple mail transfer transport protocol server SMTP server what you can Google it and get the SMTP for Gmail but this is it right here SMTP dot gmail dot com and you're gonna use a port now when you check it out they're gonna have two ports 465 or 587 what I found is that sometimes 587 works with SSL enabled and sometimes it does not sometimes 465 works with SSL, with SSL and sometimes it doesn't sometimes you have to disable SSL and then it works so you toggle around with the different settings until you find ones that, 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 that actually is successful now you can choose to attach an image as well as to the email and you can choose the interval for the images right and here we have the authentication for the email I'm not saying you have to remember the password so this is where you enter the password and you confirm the password so you enter it twice and now we get down to who's going to receive the email now the receiver and there's a receiver address you can put whatever you want to put here All right? this is who it will go to however in the address section also put an email that you know is yours so you can check it and confirm because when you hit test it's going to test and then we have success so we hit ok and then we save these settings so the save has succeeded now when we generate an email you see we have the inbox so we go and we log in now to our, our email and we will see when we go into the inbox you see there's a test message here now that's the test message we just sent so when we open it up, we're going to see a few things. See, this email is used to test whether your SMT settings work. So what we're going to notice here, this name. Now not notice it's, it's saying my name and it's saying it's me because this is my email. But this name here is what's going to match here as a sender. So in the sender area, from it's going to be here but this is actually my email so this is how I identify who is who now let me go into further details so you see from sender right to receiver now remember in the receiver we put this name and this is the address so this is the receiver right give you date and time tell you test message test message from and this is where we really identify where it came from all right so this is the name of the the dvr dvr name we go right here device name it matches so that's the test dvr settings all right so that's just a test so let's look at one that came previously from illegal login now I know this last one at 9 p.m. was me but we'll look at one that happened on January 6th now he had a legal login on January 6th so we have a date and a time okay so January 6th around 1 or 6 p.m. he had someone attempt to log in and he didn't use the right password so now how do we find this information we go back here we go to maintenance maintenance we go to the search sorry it'll say upgrade and maintenance you go to log and then we, we start looking for the illegal logins how we do the major types we look in all types you come here we look for the exceptions and then we come here and we look for illegal login right now the reason why we can look at exception and legal login is because we set those here so we, we, we after you set the email after you set up your email and you confirm it's working good then you come here to exception 
and then you start linking what you want to do so if the hard drive was full I could send an email I could make it make noise and we don't want that sometimes you know the hard drive gets full and overwrites during that time when it's overriding it's gonna make a lot of noise so you don't want to do that so what I usually set is if it has an error it'll send me an email so if the hard drive is going bad I want to know because I'll need to change that if the network goes down it will send an email after it comes back up so I know that the network went down so if I see frequent emails where the network is being disconnected I know that there's trouble with the ISP or there's trouble with his with the connection from the DVR I could call and say hey you do you're moving the DVR wrong anyone did doing work uh, is your internet down or is it giving trouble is you know ISP working on something at your house and you could say yeah no maybe you know you could you know you could get to the bottom of it um, the IP address conflict if you set it up right you won't have to worry about this usually you set a static so you won't have this problem and this is the one we want to get into the legal login so I have it to send an email you can have it make a noise so that you can know but if it's in your bedroom and someone tries usually at 2 in the morning it's gonna wake you up believe that if you have it hooked up to surveillance center they will also get notified as well in any of these options so you just pick which options are best for you and you decide so remember here yeah, illegal login set that to the email so right so now we're going back to where we can find the event itself so we're going into maintenance going into log and we go into the types we look at an exception what type of exception illegal login and now we put in the search parameters so remember it was on the 6th of January so you're gonna go back to the 6th of January it was around 1 o'clock but we'll start at the beginning of the day see what happens and we go up to today's date so we select OK to confirm this date and you could put another date here if you want to search in a time period but I'm just gonna run it down till the end matter of fact no I'll just put it for that day on the 6th as well on the 6th uh, hit OK. So we'll search for what happened that day. So we had one attempt. Okay, so you see the time matches the time in the email, right? 1306, 32, 1306, 31. So 31 had happened, 32 the email was sent. So it was a sec the type was exception, illegal login. It didn't have a channel because it, it's not considering the channels. It will tell you which user logged in or attempted to log in and it was the admin user most DVRs or most any system would be attacked at the admin password that's why it's so important as I emphasized in the last video to protect the admin password and this is the IP address that was used so we just copy this IP address and we go in our browser and we type who is and we put the IP address in and we hit enter now you can look GIP lookup or any one of these here to find who it is so I'll just use the first one that comes up in the Google search and the IP address we're looking for is 141 130 right 13 one three zero one three one one four one sorry so we're looking for 141 so we scroll down uh, 141 and it has an IP lookup so we get general information so here we see this one came from United States in Los Angeles so somebody in LA uh, made an attempt who knows and you can see someone in a park so maybe just somebody randomly out there sitting down just doing nothing in the park it says in the middle of the water I'm pretty sure that no one is sitting in the middle of the water with a laptop so this is just like a general geolocation it doesn't even have to be anywhere in Los Angeles this could be somebody in China somebody in Russia somebody in Brazil somebody in Ecuador somebody in the Netherlands as I've seen before it can come from anywhere they could be using VPNs they could be using 
uh, anything to deflect the IP address but at least this gives you an idea well it's not in your country so not somebody locally up to something nefarious you know so we've successfully traced it to Los Angeles and we have a starting point for our investigation as to who is trying to log in and we have the ISP name Zen layer you can also look them up as well make sure they actually exist that this is a real company Zen layer hey metal servers so this is an ISP okay and there we have them now I'm not saying that they're responsible for any hacking I'm just saying someone using their infrastructure made an attempt to log in to RDVR on at 106 p.m. on the 6th of January that's all I'm saying so using this inf information you see how we're able to trace yeah so we see how we use the information from the email to go into a DVR and do a trace locate that IP address and do a trace as to where it could possibly originate from now as you can see from my email this person gets a lot of attacks a lot a lot of attacks so it's important to have a strong password the reason why they haven't gotten in and done any kind of damage is because there's a strong password and it's a password that will be changed ever so often so good luck with that well I hope this has helped someone and if you learned something give me a thumbs up if you didn't learn something give me a thumbs down if you like what you see and you want to see some more you can subscribe be sure to click the alarm bell so you're notified whenever new videos come out and thank you once again for spending time with us here at Fixwing PC as we go through these processes I know sometimes the videos are long but I try to make the information relevant and try to explain it in the best way you can understand if you still don't understand shoot me a comment I will respond so once again thank you for joining us here at Fixwing PC my name is Damien and enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah.